Gavana Milan. So I thought that I would go a little bit more um, deeper into the idea of different dimensions now that I'm starting to reawaken um, to my starseed self and, and remembering this information. Um, I would like to share it with you guys so that you get a clearer understanding of what is really going on in reality. Um, so let's start at zero dimension. So um, I talked about this in my starseed story when I was coming out and I received information that everything will be well at zero point. And what zero point is, is the place of singularity where all the stored energy is um, at its potential state. And it is the God state. It is the full divine creational state of being. This is where God resides. This is where God lives. Um, as a, as a, as a sentient creator force. So when you look at this picture that I showed you in the other video and you see it's a ball of light which is a wonderful representation. So this is zero dimension. This is the zero point singularity. It is a ball of light that exists as a conscious aware sentient force that then expands itself and 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 splinters off into the material world. So in zero dimension we can't be completely sure what exists. Um, I believe that when we actually go through the process of leaving our physical body we enter back into that state of zero dimension point and we are then brought into that that sentient source that then reflects on our memories and our actions throughout our life and the book of life that is talked about in the Quran and in the Bible in the sense of you know the book of life in the general idea of it is the record of your soul and some people um, who have channeled and who are mediums consider the book of life to be the Akashic records to be the place where all records are stored all information are stored so in zero density or in zero dimension that is where all of the records of all beings of all souls are actually stored and that is what it means about judgment it, it is your soul going back to the source and being able to review and reflect on your actions in that lifetime and I believe that once you get to that zero dimension when you when you die and you're brought back to that place I believe that that is the center of a deciding factor of whether you come back and incarnate into a different body or you go off to another planet um, or you um, stay in that state of bliss. So that's where the decisions are actually made is in that zero in, in, in that zero dimension that is God. God is that source of, of knowledge and information that can create at will and also can reflect at will on each individual soul and creation that it creates. So that is the center of judgment, that is the center of reflection, that is the center of all thought and where, um, where creation manifests from. So that is God. And that is why the Big Bang is talked about as being you know, stored potential and then exploding outward. So even beyond that point of the Big Bang is where God resides. It is the, it is the thought to expand and to explode in the first place that's where God resides and our our human brain and even Pleiadian mind cannot even really um, physically contain that information in the physical body so um, it, it's hard to remember where we originate from as 
creations. But we end up back there eventually because we're all called back to that original source. So that is a really wonderful representation of how I view what Allah is, what God is. In any language in the world, um, source, I like to call it the divine. I feel that that is a, a word that doesn't, um, that does not, um, how can I say, um, insult anybody because it's a you know it's kind of a, a unity word so you know everybody can can relate to the divine but um that's iru that's iru iluvatar in tolkien's lord of the rings so zero dimension is the place of where all creation emanates from and where we all go back to and where we are given a chance to reflect on our lives and um, to align ourselves with that God consciousness and to um, be able to make the decision whether to come back or whether to rest in our state of bliss. When a soul rests in the state of zero dimension, that is bliss. It is perfect harmony, perfect bliss. Um, it is exactly what the Bible talks about as being heaven, um, it is like the heaven in the Quran. It is any, any type of thing that a soul imagines to be a place of peace and relaxation and bliss. That is the state that it will be at. That is, that is the land of Arda. That is um, the undying lands in Lord of the Rings. That is a place where there is no more suffering. There is no more dying. There is no more duality. So there is complete, perfect order and harmony, and that is where you rest. So it is an, an amazing, beautiful thing to imagine that all souls eventually go back to that place. So um, I'm going to take this step by step, and each video is actually going to go a little bit more further into the different dimensions. So this is purely just on the zero dimension, and I know my language is very abstract and vague, but that is what the zero dimension is to us as physical constructs of creation. We cannot know until we actually let go of the physical body and go back to the source. But it's important to understand that when you try to um, escape your physical body and go back to the source before your lessons are learned, so the idea about suicide and... Um, living by the sword and dying by the sword in the sense that you're trying to harm another and you get killed in the process, what happens is you go back to that center of where information is stored in that zero dimension and that is when your life is looked at. And so God realizes and, and, and reflects on the idea that this soul has not learned its full potential, has not learned its full lessons of harmony, of unity, of love, of all those abstract ideals that we strive for as beings. And so that is why um, that is why suicide and escaping from the material world before you are ready and also consequences of choices of robbing a bank armed and then a cop shoots you, well that was your choice and you therefore will will have to suffer the consequences of your actions in that, that you died before your soul could actually evolve and grow. So that is why it's very important to live a very peaceful life that you don't hurt others and people are not going to try to harm you as well. Now, if a soul is actually taken out of this world without any kind of ill intent that they have done um, and they are completely innocent, like take... For example, a child, a child that is actually um, killed, you know, by another soul. This is where, this is where the 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 blessings and um, this is where the compassion and mercy comes from. God is that when an innocent soul is actually killed and a soul goes back to that zero dimension into that place of information. God reflects on that idea that this soul has not um, caused its own escape and it has not caused its own stopping of soul growth. Therefore, it will 
be allowed to learn in a, a a better way, a more safe, secure way. So it will be incarnated into a life that will provide it ability to actually learn its lessons in a very secure, safe environment where they will not be, um, they will not, they will not be, um, interfered with in a sense. So their life will be a little bit more easier. Um, or that soul will, will be able to rest like that child soul that was killed will actually be able to rest in that blissful state for all eternity and and that will be its reward for being an innocent you know pure soul that was just taken too soon from this world so those are the two avenues that can happen for a innocent soul that is killed by another so um when you are an innocent soul, whether you are killed by another or when you are an innocent soul, you live out your life till your natural time of dying, um, it is better for you and it is more rewarding for you because then you can go back to God into that information center, into that source of all creation and you have the choice. You, It's like a win-win situation. You either incarnate into a more peaceful wonderful next life and next next existence that that takes all your memories and your rewards that you have gathered from having a good life and you move into an even better existence or you get to rest for all eternity so it becomes your choice and when you rest for all eternity it's like a beautiful dream that you never wake up from so there are um it is a win-win situation for good souls that either are taken too early not by their own hand or they have lived out their life and have accumulated all the experience that was um, needed for their growth so zero dimension is God it is the 72 names of God it is Allah it is Yahweh it is the great spirit of the Native Americans it is Iru it is the place of our unity consciousness source and when you can project yourself into the zero dimension of unity consciousness, you can walk around the earth actually not feeling like God, because that's not really um, that's not really helpful to others, but actually feeling that you are interconnected with all souls, and that it is a win-win situation in the sense that when you have mistakes you learn from you grow from so you win in that way and when you are moving forward um and and moving forward on a natural uh, state in your life you also win in that way because you accumulate the wisdom and the the information to carry forward into your next incarnation so um yeah it's it's amazing to think about how much love we actually come from and how the creative source of all things is so loving that it allows each being to play out its existence in order to grow and to reach full maturity into the fact that when they reach full maturity they have a choice to actually live in the most unimaginable bliss that you can even imagine and that is what heaven is in the divine text um, we can only understand it from a human level on the on our planet earth through the human language but people who understand what heaven is and they seek for it and and this is why they are um, they're in the cycle of, of self-improvement and repenting and learning from their mistakes and growing. They know that in their soul, in their heart, heaven is the true home. It is the place where we are all kind of walking each other home. Um, and, and this is where we all want to go eventually. And for the Palladian soul, this is your last incarnation in a sense where you are helping humanity in order to really uh, catapult your own soul evolution so that you can end up back into that zero dimension, into that information center, and choose to either rest in a blissful state for all eternity. Um, there will probably be some 
extraterrestrial souls that will want to go into another planet or you know live out their life in another way um, me particularly I am looking for final rest and if I had to come back I would want to come back as a light source energy that would just like be um, like an angel that would just kind of guide and uh, be there in an instant whenever needed so that would be my goal if I could if I could choose if I could go back to God's source and actually ask for what I really what I want in my next incarnation that's that's where I am I would not want to come back as a, a human and experience the same kind of human drama of forgetting and then remembering and then awakening um, it's it, it's a process it, it, there's a lot of wonderful things to it but um, when you are an old soul and when you finally awaken to the fact like oh I have done this so many times when you are at that point you're like I don't want to do this again I am I am done I am done and I I'm going to live out this life in the best way I can. I'm going to help others. I'm going to reach my soul growth so that by the time I close my eyes and I am I am gone from this material world, I can go back to God and say, God, let me rest. Let me rest in eternal bliss of yours. Um, and God is ever loving and ever merciful and will allow any soul to do what it wants to unless there are consequences behind its choices that it must learn in order to grow. That's really why there are consequences such as hellish realms of dimensions and things like that experienced because it is all for the growth of a soul. That is it. If there was no consequences or punishments to a soul um, that did wrong, that soul would never learn. And the whole process of evolution and uh, of why we are here is actually to learn and to evolve ourselves and to move back home to the zero dimension of, of God. So there's something very interesting about the different dimensions because when you look at the picture here you see that there's um, what happens is as you rise up into the higher dimensions you get all these different pers perspectives, interconnectivity, you're unified with one another, um, you see things from all these sorts of different angles, you have empathy and you have this immense spiritual growth to you. But then what happens is eventually when you get to the higher dimensions, even the eighth dimension, everything all collapses back into that one bright light zero dimension point and and that's that's the that's the amazing beauty is that we come from the source of creation we expand outward and then we're eventually all called back into that one source and it and we all go home every single soul every extraterrestrial soul every single human soul all goes home the only difference is that each individual journey of the soul and their choices that they make determines what kind of home you end up in and and that's and that's the divine truth so um, that is why all the divine texts tell us to be good to do good um, and there are consequences because the consequences are in order to learn and and eventually um, learn and what happens is if an evil soul like say someone like Hitler or, or say you know um, Jeffrey Dahmer let's take a serial killer so say a soul that has harmed people right and what happens is they did not learn the lesson of unity or of love they were stuck in their subjective ego and they thought that killing others made them feel good but they didn't care about the loved ones of that victim they didn't care about the pain of that victim that they were injuring they just cared about their own happiness so what ends up happening is when so when Jeffrey Dahmer actually died and went back into that zero dimension of of information and and reflection and God when Jeffrey Dahmer goes back to God what ends up happening is 
Jeffrey Dahmer has to learn. His soul has to learn and evolve eventually in order to get back to the whole of God, the goodness of God. So therefore, it's put in a situation in the next incarnation, the next life, that is of a hellish state, that is harder for them. Um, they are just born into a very difficult situation in which it makes them, it forces them to actually look for the good, to look for the light of God. Um, when you're on your knees, this is why a lot of people have these spiritual realizations and spiritual awakenings and, and come to God. When you are on your knees, when you are forced on your knees because everything in the world crumbles before you, you lose your family, you lose your job, you lose your home, you lose um, a loved one. When you are on your knees suffering and in pain, you will look for anything that will give you relief from your pain. And what happens is it starts to open up the doorway to a tunnel of light and to look towards something that's going to relieve you of that pain, to heal you of that pain. And that's when you come into awareness of God and of the creation source that you come from, Iru Iluvatar, uh, the divine. And when a soul is able to do that, that is when it, it catapults them into the next stage of their consciousness levels in which they are on their way home. They are, they are now on the path because when you're harming others, when you're an evil soul, Jeffrey Dahmer, he was not on the path. He was so fragmented from God. He was so separate, so isolated from God. He was not on the path yet. So his next incarnation is a hellish realm that forces him back on the path only because it's about his soul growth. It's about his soul learning. Every soul must learn. Every, must, every soul must go through that learning and, and through that journey um, in order to make its way back to that zero dimension into God. So that is what information I have... Um, I have uh, come into and I hope it helps you understand what is going on with innocent souls dying and where they go and where um, evil souls go and where they go and how it relates to the divine text. Now the divine text, you know, they use the language of fire and brimstone and, and uh, fire and, you know, rotting flesh and things like that. And it's, it's done in this way because it's supposed to instill a little bit of fear in humanity in the sense that it's supposed to make humans say, well, I don't want my flesh to be rotting and to be falling off in fire, in a fiery pit. So it is in order to instill them with fear at first. But then what needs to happen is there needs to come a, voluntarily, a voluntary idea to be good. Because if you're only good out of fear, well, God knows that, and, and your soul, your higher self knows that, and so you will not learn the lessons that you truly are here to learn. So your goodness has to eventually come from just a need to be unified with others, to feel that unity and that interconnection with one. And that's where the goodness comes from, is that you start to awaken to your higher perspectives and understanding that you are interconnected with another. So if you make someone suffer and hurt, you are actually making yourself suffer and hurt. You will not be away from those consequences of hurting another, that you will feel those consequences in some form and, and, and another. Um, so that is the zero dimension. That is the source of all information. And that is why God is all knowing and um, all powerful because that is the source where everything stems from. And that is where judgment happens and where we are reflected upon and where decisions are made for each soul, whether we have learned our lesson or not, and what next has to happen into our next existence. So all I can say to humanity is, um, and I have been doing this myself as I have awakened, is repent and learn your mistakes. You know, repent in the sense that, you know, let go of your ego, ask a higher source to forgive you, 
and to help you infuse the strength to turn your life around and to um and and to always try to make amends and uh, make sure that you're not harming others because there will be consequences of your actions. You may not experience them in the physical world. Our, our court system is not completely 100 divine order, 100% divine order. And it, there are some human errors and it's, um, it's full of loopholes that have been created by humans. Um, so it's, it's not going to be where we're going to have that exact justice but in the hereafter, in the next, in, in that zero dimension where we go to that source of information, that's where justice is, is, is seen. And, and that is where truth is revealed and information is given. So in the end times, in, when the book is talking about the revelations in the end times, um, what it is talking about is that when a species gets to a point where it's done with its growing, um, it's the end of the story, or or they can no longer uh, support life, what happens is all of the beings are pulled back into zero dimension, and so everything collapses upon itself and goes back into that single zero um, point. And then that is where information, that's where the judgment starts happening of each particular soul and divine spark of the divine is looked at. Um, so that's what it's talking about when it says that all souls will be called and a judgment will be given is because when the universe collapses and, um, and comes into one, into that single point again, that is God, that is the creation source, and that is where the consciousness will actually be looked at of each individual soul. So um, I hope this gives you a little bit more clarity to um, what the zero dimension is and how it relates to each soul. And, and, and I guess you could say that it's kind of like a, a portal in the sense that that is where all souls emanate from. So when you die, you go back there and then it's decided where you end up next. Um, and and then another you know your your incarnation goes out towards another place but everybody always ends up back in that zero dimension all as much as we expand outward we always eventually come back to the source um and and that's what scientists are are discovering is that our universe is expanding but is also subtly coming back together and and um, that's what the books are talking about in, in the idea that judgment will happen. Well, we all come back to that creational source and are looked at and examined. And every atom of good, every atom of, of bad is actually accounted for. So, you know, humans start to see that, start to see your consequences are actually an energetic um, source to you. And they add to your experiences and what your your memories are and then what you take into your next incarnation or if you can rest in bliss if you are a soul that is looking to rest in bliss well you need to do the work here you need to actually um, advance your consciousness to a level where you have accumulated all of that information and that knowledge and have learned the lessons of love unity peace um, and all of the wonderful abstract ideals that we aspire to in stories and in myths. And when you actually do accumulate those and those become encompassed into your essence and your soul of who you are, then that's when you can relax in total bliss and in harmony with, um, with God. And that's, that's what they're talking about when... When you go back to that state of bliss, you are with the pure companions that are around you, the angels, the other beings that have been um, in that blissful state of, of relaxation. And uh, that, is, that is the beautiful gardens to some, that is a beautiful castle in the sky to some, that is the never-ending dream that you don't have to wake up from if you are um, done learning and you don't have to experience the physical world any longer because you have learned the lessons of the physical world and of duality and um, and have been able to find your way back home. So I hope this helps you and I will start with the next part into one dimension on the next video. Hannon Lay for watching.